Hello everybody. Welcome to Word Shard. Hello everybody. Today we will be coming up with another topic that is I know why the caged bird sings written by Maya Angelou. You know it is it is the full poem is all about protest is what protest brings out from within you okay what you have you have to speak it up so that everybody else around you hears your problems okay so we will be talking about this poem but before that as i every as i always do the little match girl which we did in the last class the question that from there was uh, question number one was why did little match girl not go back home uh, many of you have answered Varalakshmi you have answered Deepika you have answered uh, you have said that uh, his father used to beat her very badly was she was abused at home point number one do not write in points just I am talking about what you will have to write then the other point is her house was so bad that it could not guard her from the cold okay because it had holes everywhere on his roof on her roof beside on the walls everywhere so it was no need of going back home and getting the beating she could just live outside because living outside and getting inside the house was safe could not save her from the cold this is the answer second one um, what did the girl see in her first two visions this is very easy the first two vision first one was the iron stove and the second one was the uh, the roasted goose on the dining table came swimming or came flying on the wing with the fork and prunes and apples on it. Okay. So these two are the answers and these were very easy. Today also we will have questions in the end. And one more thing that because I see many of you are asking a lot of questions. You have some questions regarding the topics. You can do one thing. You can write to me the questions. Okay. According to the chapter, you write to me the questions. The ones which I find are, if you have written just half a mark question or something like that, then I'll answer it directly. If you have a question, a big question, that means don't ask everything in right. I'll obviously tell you that everything is there in the video. If you listen to the video, take points from there and write your own answer. Okay. But if I find such questions which are big that needs to be discussed, then I'll make separate shorts. That means the short videos that you find for each of that question uh, so that you can find it out in the short video okay so that that will be chapter one so what you can do is you ask your questions in the comment section i will mention to you that you watch it in the short or you uh, see it in the comment section and accordingly you will get your answer okay so okay let's move on to the chapter and see how far you can understand it I know why the caged bird sings written by Maya Angelou. It is a poem and before we start the poem we first should know a bit about the poet isn't it somebody who has written this poem she must have been thinking about something she must have been uh, worried about something or happy about something and that is why she wrote the poem she wanted to express that emotion in the poem isn't it so what was the reason for which she wrote this poem? Let us read a little bit of her life. Okay. Maya Angelou was sent to her grandparents' house, Arkansas, after her parents' divorce. So her parents divorced and then she was sent to her grandparents' house and that is in Arkansas. Okay. Now that place, Arkansas, was a racist society. What is racism? What do you mean by racist society? where people differentiate you because of your skin color or because of certain other reasons that means somebody might be uh, having a skin complexion which is fair and somebody might have a dark complexion okay and the people with a fair complexion start thinking that they are superior or they are better than the black ones okay that is a kind of racist society okay Maya faced the discrimination not only for being an African American but also for being a woman. So she was doubly deprived. First, she was an African American. That means she had a black skin tone. Uh, I have I will tell you to go to Google and search Maya Angelou's image. You will see who she is. You must know her because of her beautiful writings. Okay. So, because she is an African American, because of her skin color and because she is a woman, you know already women were deprived in the society. So, because she was a woman and because she was an African American, she was doubly marginalized. She was deprived of her rights. 
on the basis of her race and gender so she was deprived because of her race because she was african american dark skin complexion and also because of her gender because she was a woman okay she even lost her voice during an assault that means she was tortured so much she had to face so much discrimination that such a physical assault led to her loss of voice she stopped speaking okay so you could understand when somebody is too much traumatized or too much tortured only then he or she will stop speaking at all together isn't it so later through her poetry she regained her voice and she protested against such discrimination so later on through her poetry she started writing the poems and through those poems she got back her voice she started speaking she realized that she must protest against the discrimination she realized that she must protest she must speak up so that she gets what she was devoid of okay she was not given the freedom she was not given any rights so so that she could get it back she had to protest for it okay coming to the first stanza you see a free bird leaps on the back of the wind the poem is very easy but you see there are some symbolic meanings that you have to understand other than that the whole poem is extremely easy you will get every single thing in this pdf itself when whatever i explain you listen to it properly all the questions will be set from here okay a free bird leaps let us first understand the meaning word by word a free bird leaps leaps means see this image like when a bird starts flying she will just open up her wings and dive into the orange sky isn't it when it is all over yellow in color orange in color when the sun rises or the sun sets it is totally orange and yellow in color it is a very happy tone everywhere everywhere there is happiness there is freedom and the bird flies and goes anywhere that she likes all around in the sky so the limitless sky is her place she can choose to go wherever she wants isn't it and on the back of the wind that means she just sweeps downwards and upwards and goes wherever the wind takes her and floats downstream sometimes you will see the the bird will just glide with the wind okay the wind when it takes when the wind takes it to the east it will go towards the east when it swoops downward you will see that the wind with the wind it is flying without flapping its wings okay so with the wind it will go on flying till the current end so when the wind is over when it has when it has come down to land or when it has got uh, to sit on a tree then finally uh, it stops flying and dips his wing in the orange sun rays that means it is so happily flying in the sky in this beautiful orange colored sky this orange color is a symbol what kind of a symbol a color that is symbolic of prosperity happiness positivity glow why is this orange word used with the free bird because the free bird is somebody who has that extreme freedom to do whatever she or he chose to do okay it can leap on the back of the wind it can move with the wind it can flow with the wind it can choose to sit anywhere whenever she wants it can uh, go anywhere where he wants okay so he can choose the choose to go and do whatever he wants all around the limitless sky there is no limit to her or his freedom so this orange color is that positivity or glow or happiness that the free bird enjoys sun rays and dares to claim the sky so dares to claim the sky means the bird this free bird is capable of calling the whole sky the big sky his own place because nobody is there to control him nobody is there to restrict him or stop him from calling the sky his own okay so you see how the free bird enjoys limitless freedom next we will also read the summary so that you get an idea because some of you i have seen you want the summary also so i have the bits and pieces of summary added added after ex, uh, every extract okay every stanza you'll get the explanation of that stanza what did i write the poet refers to the flight of a free bird so we are talking about a free bird over here what he can do he can dare to call the limitless sky his own limitless sky you cannot find any limit to the sky isn't it all around when you see you will see just the sky the big huge sky so that limitless sky is the free bird it can go and do and choose to do whatever he wants in that sky 
okay it looks as if the bird has immersed his wings in the orange rays of the sun covering the sky so this is the symbol of the americans you see this is an extended metaphor although the poet talks about the free bird and the caged bird she is actually maya angelou is actually trying to point out the free birds are the americans the white americans who enjoy huge amount of freedom they can choose to do whatever they want whereas the other half of the society that is the african americans are the caged birds who are not allowed to do anything they are deprived of all their rights so you see the contrast at one side you find the free bird who enjoys everything and on the other hand you find the cage bird who are deprived of everything who get nothing okay so next we'll move to the second stanza where we will be talking about the caged bird but a bird that stalks down his narrow cage so once you see the beautiful the free bird who is moving around in the sky in the limitless sky and just the next image is the image of a bird inside a narrow cage okay and down his narrow cage can seldom see through his bars of rage seldom means he can rarely see through the bars of rage all around him he is put in a narrow cage in a small cage he is sitting and he cannot look outside he cannot go outside that cage he is tied down over there inside the cage and what is happening because of that rage that means he is extremely angry why because he is captivated because he has to live in that small cage he is deprived of all rights even the right to move freely okay his wings are clipped and his feet are tied so it is not that he is just kept inside the cage but he is doubly deprived there are many ways in which he is deprived he is kept inside a small cage his feet is tied his feet are tied up his wings are clipped so in every possible way his freedom is taken away from him his rights are taken away from him and so the only possible way with which he can reach to other people he can speak about what he wants is his throat now if a bird is kept inside the cage even then he has a little bit of power to to speak and sing isn't it he the bird can sing even then when he is inside the cage so that is the only possible way by which the african americans could tell their a uh, plight or tell or talk about their uh, problems and let other people know it okay so that is why from here you can understand why maya angelou wrote poems she wrote poems so that people from various parts of the world came to know what was the problem that these these uh, black uh, the black people or the african americans faced how they were deprived of every single thing by the whites okay so they had to do something so that other people came to know about this isn't it imagine i tell you that you will get no break time in school you will have continuous eight classes okay then what will you all do you will say you will protest against it you will say that no this cannot happen we need a break time for us we cannot just go on studying isn't it so this is a protest this is you have to voice it you have to speak isn't it you have to speak out that you need it if you don't speak out then who will speak out for for you so for that if imagine you are tied up in every possible way just like this caged bird but you still have your throat you still can sing or write poems and write stories and talk about what the white americans do to you how they deprive you of of your rights okay so summary now the poet talks about the caged bird so now he is she is talking about the caged bird what is the condition of the caged bird his vision is limited he cannot see a, a lot of distance because she is kept in a cage his movement is limited he cannot even move freely because he is kept inside the cage he can be angry because he is tied up within the cage he is tied up even within the cage just opposite to the extreme freedom enjoyed by the free bird okay symbolic of the african american so you are given one image where a bird is extremely free enjoying all types of freedom and you are given another image where there is a caged bird who is not only caged but his feet are tied and wings are clipped so he is deprived in many way okay so you see the contrast you can be asked the contrast when you give these images okay i think up to this it is clear coming to the third stanza the caged bird sings with a fearful trill 
why fearful trill trill means you know the the bird's song so that is fine so it is the bird's song but why fearful the caged bird is very scared why is he scared although he wants freedom there are certain problems when you get the freedom isn't it there are certain for example if i give you the freedom of uh, going wherever you want Okay, one day I tell you that you go wherever you want. You uh, do not. I will not take you to school, or I will not take you to the tuition. You are just free to go on your own. There are certain responsibilities also, risks also. You might face some danger on the road. There can be an accident. There can be some stranger who takes you away, kidnaps you. There are certain problems also that comes with that freedom, isn't it? So that is why. because the caged bird has no idea that what will happen when he gets the freedom he is afraid also okay that what will happen if i get freedom what what will i face then of things unknown so he does not know anything about freedom what will happen after he gets freedom but therefore he is afraid fearful but still he wished for freedom long for still means even then when he is aware that there can be certain problems once he gets freedom he still wishes for it and his tune is heard on the distant hill for the caged bird sings of freedom why is the tune heard on the distant hill what is the meaning of this see when i start talking about protesting uh, about certain things when i write poems on it when i speak of it when i write stories on it and people start reading it what will happen people from far away places will come to know about me isn't it will come to know about my problems so in the same way the the caged bird sings out screams out for freedom and wishes that perhaps his his problems will be heard by people who lives far away even the people in the far away places will come to know about the problems faced by the african americans and they will also support their cause okay So the summary: the caged bird quavers while singing of the things unknown. He is very afraid. What will happen when I get the freedom? He does not know what he will have to face when he is free. Yet he desires freedom. Although he does not know what will happen after he gets it, he still sings of it because you know freedom is the best thing that you can get, isn't it? Anything. If I tell you that I will not uh, uh, throughout your life you'll have to be within this house. You cannot go outside. But I'll give you a lot of money, plates of biryani. Okay, many things I'll give you. I'll give you iPhone. I'll give you different types of smart smartphones. Even then you will say that no, I want the freedom only. I want my own. Uh, i want to fulfill my own desires in my own way okay so that is why freedom is the most important thing he is heard even in far away places and perhaps few will join the protest so he wishes that perhaps when i sing and scream of my problems people will come to know about us and they will also protest for us okay next we'll move to the fourth stanza the free bird thinks of another breeze and the trade winds soft through the sighing trees and the fat worms waiting on a dawn bright lawn and he names the sky his own so the free bird now thinks of another breeze imagine the selfishness of this free bird the americans they have enjoyed one breeze already now he wants more he wants more and more and more of freedom selfishly when you see the other part of the society gets nothing gets no right does not even have the right to vote but the other part of the society wants more and more and more of freedom okay the trade winds soft through the sighing trees so the trade winds are the strong winds that blow through the trees and there is a kind of uh, a kind of sound that is created if you go to the forests and listen to the winds when it passes through the trees and the leaves rustle there is a strange kind of sound made that is the sighing trees okay and the fat worms waiting on a dawn bright lawn and he names the sky his own so you see even the fat it seems that the fat worms the insects are also waiting that when the free bird will come and eat me okay so everything is waiting for the free bird he it is ready it is ready and served on his plate and he gets everything in the society and he can name the sky his own he can call everything his own on the, so what is the summary let us read it once on the other hand the free bird has not yet had enough so when you see that one part of the society is deprived of everything the other part 
wants more and more he enjoys one breeze and then waits for another he is expecting another breeze he wants to uh, do more number of things enjoy his time even more even the fat worms are waiting to feed themselves to the free boy so it seems that they are also waiting to be served in his plate it seems everything belongs to him okay so next we'll move to the fifth stanza but a caged bird stands on the grave of dream grave of dreams why because you see the cage is itself a symbol of a grave of a graveyard where all the dreams of the bird of this caged bird is lying dead okay imagine the cage is the graveyard where all the bodies the dead bodies are kept so in that cage who is living the caged bird so the cage all the dreams of this caged bird are dead dreams of freedom is dead so it seems that the cage is a symbol of the graveyard for the dreams of the caged bird okay his shadow shouts on a nightmare scream it seems that just like a young boy you know if they they he often sees a nightmare and screams in fear in the same way the bird is screaming the caged bird is screaming inside his cage screaming of what screaming of freedom his wings are clipped and his feet are tied and he opens his throat to sing this is a repetition this is a refrain you know refrain when you repeat certain lines to emphasize the theme of the poem you are talking about uh, the the african americans who are deprived of freedom so that is why we are talking about these lines more once and more than once okay to emphasize on their problems so what is the summary the cage has now become the grave of the bird's dreams you can be asked what do you mean by grave of dreams so you will say that the cage for the caged bird is the grave is the graveyard for all the dreams that he sees the dreams of freedom because they are dead perhaps they will never get the freedom that they want okay the bird is aware that his freedom is denied and perhaps he will never be successful in achieving his freedom his screams and cries for freedom is similar to the screams of a child seeing a nightmare it is quite similar to the screams of a child who is seeing a nightmare and screaming out in extreme fear okay so what is the fear that the caged bird sees that he will never be given the freedom that he wants yet the bird continues to scream and fight for freedom but does the bird stop protesting for it no he does not stop he continues his protest although he knows that perhaps he'll never be successful he goes on and on there there is always a hope okay so the poem is ending at a at a point of hope that you know however you go if you go on trying and trying there will be a time when you'll be successful so perhaps these african americans will also be successful in their attempt let's see coming to the sixth stanza the last one you see this is a repetition of the third stanza the cage the whole thing the caged bird sings with a fearful trail of things unknown but long for still and his tune is heard on the distant hill for the caged bird sings of freedom so you see the sixth stanza is a complete repetition of the third stanza why because repeatedly we are we are talking about the plight the problems faced by the african americans so we have to emphasize on it my angelu herself was was an african american she was a woman she was deprived in many ways she lost her voice also as i told you okay so she wanted to emphasize on this repeated the hammer it okay that you see this is the problem this is the problem we have to come out of it okay that is why she repeats to emphasize this image is just for the sake of your knowledge that they used to protest in large numbers even the white people also some of them supported the uh the black uh, the african americans okay so they used to make placards like this black lives matter because they were deprived of everything okay so that is why just like in our society we have we, we have seen uh, people depriving the scheduled castes and scheduled tribes just for nothing isn't it the brahmins used to discriminate these people just like the americans used to discriminate the african americans for their skin color okay so they protested went on protesting and finally they got a little bit of freedom they got their few of their rights back okay so the summary this is just a repetition this stanza is a repetition of the third stanza to emphasize the distressing condition of the caged bird the extremely bad condition of the caged bird or the african americans 
okay so when you come to the themes you know that i'll discuss the themes the figures of speech all together in this uh, with the poem so first the theme there are three ideas see freedom versus enslavement you see the same question can come in different ways you can be asked to describe the contrast you have to contrast with the, the free bird and the caged bird okay so the both the questions can be answered in the same manner you see how i have written it enslavement means when you have to uh, be a slave of the other person okay the theme of freedom versus enslavement runs throughout the poem so throughout the poem you see this one bird is enjoying freedom the other bird is just living like a slave so you see the how do we talk about the free bird when we talk about the free bird we use these sentences that dips his wings in the orange sun rays and dares to claim this claim the sky so we we mean that the free bird is given unrestricted movements she, he is capable of going anywhere he likes and when we talk about the caged bird how do we discuss how do we talk about them in the poem the enslavement is symbolized by the caged bird whose wings are clipped and feet are tied so these words show that it is not just the bird the caged bird is just kept in the small cage he is deprived in many ways his feet are tied wings are clipped the bird is imprisoned and thus is very angry but at the same time helpless so you see that it is a helpless condition of these people of the african americans who cannot even live like a human being they are enslaved all he can do is open his throat to sing for freedom so what he can do his feet are tied wings are clipped everything everything is stopped they are not allowed to do anything the only thing that they can do is sing for freedom shout for freedom furthermore the bird thinks of another breed so we again see that the free bird is not satisfied with one but he wants more and more he is selfishly desiring for more wishing for more freedom for himself okay wishes for more freedom for himself whereas the caged bird's condition is so bad that the cage itself is a symbol of his grave of dreams this is the answer for what do you mean by grave of dreams that the cage is a symbol of that graveyard where the dreams of the caged bird lie dead and buried okay even then the bird refuses to surrender and hope that his voice will be heard at some distant hill and he will be successful sometime somewhere so he does not give up his hope is not he does not surrender his hope he still wishes that sometime he will get what he deserves okay his freedom his rights next the next point is racism and slavery so this one i think you have already got an idea slavery you have understood we are talking about the white uh, about the black americans or the african americans racism is talking about the difference that the white americans thought that they were quite different from the uh, african americans because of their skin color they were superior than them okay so let's see what i have written until 1965 under a system of racial segregation known as jim crow it is good if you remember this jim crow in the southern united states is, was a kind of you know racial segregation or the way you deprive or differentiate between two types of people or two or people of different skin complexion okay so in the southern united states african americans lived in poverty so they were they continued to live in poverty they were extremely poor they were denied the right to vote they did not even have the right to vote to organize a meeting they could not organize a meeting if they wanted they could not gather together so they were deprived in many many ways what else owing to the color of their skin because they they were dark they had a dark skin color they were not allowed to use the same transport public toilets or to study in the same schools as the whites imagine just because of their skin color because they were dark they were not allowed to use the same vehicle they were not allowed to use public toilets they were not allowed to go to same schools as the whites went they were bullied they were thrown out from the school okay imagine the the difficulties they had to face third and the last point in theme is voice against oppression we are this the poem is itself voicing that these people were oppressed they wanted to speak out they want to talk about it they want to do protest okay so singing the where the cage we are this poem itself in the verse form in the stanza form you see this is a singing which is symbolic of the caged bird's rebellion their protest against oppression 
the song points out his hope and strength to fight so the the song is says talking about the that the that the bird is hoping for freedom that the bird has a lot of strength to protest for it this struggle of the caged bird is parallel to the african american struggle for freedom and equality so this is what we are talking about that actually we are talking about the freedom that the the african americans desired they, they wanted freedom they wanted equality which they did not get and so they sang wrote poems danced and cried out for freedom so initially they were heard as a distant voice so initially you know you have to work hard for these things so they worked hard first the so nobody paid attention to them and then what happened this did not stop them from raising their voice against discrimination faced by them due to the skin, due to the color of their skin until they were given equal rights as the whites so finally they got equal rights as the white americans so till then they continued their their poems their stories in whichever way they could reach people could tell them about their problems okay so this part is done next we will move on to the figures of speech figures of speech there are uh, around four to five figures of speech easy ones see alliteration you already know what is an alliteration repetition of consonant words see which lines you find you can find many such examples i have given two can seldom see through see highlighted words s s s is a consonant letter so uh, s and s is repeated in one line two times so this is an alliteration second line his shadow shouts on a nightmare scream shadow shouts s s again so this is also an alliteration coming to hyperbole you know hyperbole is something when you exaggerate when you like if i say i love you for 1000 years so i will not survive for 1000 years isn't it so why i am saying that i love you for 1000 years because i want to show that i love you a lot and this will continue to be it will last this love will last throughout my life okay i'm exaggerating my love so over here what is this what where is hyperbole and he names his sky his own he names his sky his own means that he can call the sky the full sky so much of space his own place okay so this is an exaggeration isn't it nobody can say that the sky is my property but why is this line written to show that the extreme freedom that the free bird enjoyed okay third one personification personification you know if i say the table is singing when inanimate objects or abstract ideas are given the qualities or attributes of living things over here where do you get it his shadow shouts on a nightmare screen so shadow cannot shout isn't it it is the person who can shout the shadow cannot shout so the shadow is given human qualities that the shadow is shouting so it is a personification okay coming to another example of personification you see sighing trees the trees cannot sigh isn't it uh, so when sighing means the, there is a, the, the sound is made as the wind passes through the trees and the leaves so the trees cannot sigh sigh a person can sigh in grief but okay so sighing trees is also a personification coming to the fourth one metaphor metaphor means it is a comparison without using like or as throughout the poem you see metaphors and metaphors the caged bird itself is a metaphor for the african americans the free bird itself is a metaphor for the free the the, the white americans isn't it so this we can call an extended metaphor that means throughout the poem we use these two words the caged bird and the free bird to explain the white americans freedom and the african americans problems okay last repetition and refrain throughout the poem you see a lot of repetition in the the sixth stanza and the third stanza are same why it, it, this is done to emphasize on the problems of the caged bird which is the main theme of the poem the poet herself wanted to point out their problems so he emphasizes so she emphasizes and so she repeats which is called a refrain okay we have almost come to the end of this uh, poem sometimes in some schools like uh, a few uh, like in uh, don bosco and some other schools i have seen that uh, there are autobiographical elements the questions set on autobiographical element also from this poem because you see the poem is talking about maya angelou's life only okay so we can say this is an autobiography of maya angelou okay question can come like this also in some schools they do come so i have discussed this question also
let's see what I've written down over here. See, Maya Angelou can be seen as a metaphorical caged bird with reference to the poem. As an African-American woman, she had to face racism, oppression, physical assault at her early age. It terrorized her so much that she was mute for five years. So, in the first stanza, we know, in the first paragraph that I have written, I have just talked about Maya Angelou's life, that she was deprived in many ways. It is a metaphorical poem where she almost talks about herself, her problems, the problems of the black Americans, the African Americans and also the problem of being a woman and a black American. Okay, So first I have talked about the problem. Then you say, as the caged bird opens his throat to sing, we can interpret him as Maya Angelou herself who started writing to protest, to ask for freedom. So she realized at the time that she had to speak, she had to write poems, she had to tell the world about their problems. So she started writing just as the caged bird started singing and screaming for freedom. Okay, The poem is a product of her personal experiences. Thus, Angelou, like the caged bird, is restricted. So the caged bird was also restricted inside the cage. Uh, her feet were tied and wings were clipped. But you see, it still continued singing. In the same way, Maya Angelou was also restricted, but she refused to be silenced. She said that, no, I cannot keep quiet. I have to speak out. I have to protest if I want better things to happen. Okay. So here we come to an end with this chapter, uh, with this poem. And I hope I have made this poem very easy for you. There cannot be any questions said uh, other than these, um, whatever, whatever I have discussed. Grave of dreams, then fearful trail. Okay. Uh, these uh, words can be taken and you uh, might be given to... Uh, write the meanings of these lines. I've already discussed in the poem. You can directly write it from there. Okay. Other than that, the direct questions will be from here. Oppression, enslavement, you can be asked to write. And if you face any other problem in any word, you know what you have to do. You can write to me in the comment section. I always do answer you and I will keep on answering you. And uh, if you have liked it, then please comment, subscribe and share with your friends so that uh, I can help more of your friends and I can also grow. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.